Hi everyone, this is me, Teacher Christine, and in this video, we will learn about arcs, central angles, and scribed angles. So let us start with arc, okay? So we have here the definition of an arc of a circle. So the definition of an arc of a circle it says that it is a part of a circle included between any two of its points. So if this is our circle, and we know that this is the point of our circle, and an arc is a part of a circle, so if we have this point here and point here, so if we will connect the two points on the circle, then we can create an arc. Again, if we have this point and then not the another point, and we, if we will connect the two points, oh sorry, if we will connect the two points, we can create an arc. Okay, from here up to here, so that is our. One, two, three. One, two, three, go. Hi, everyone. This is me, Teacher Christine. And in this video, we will learn about arcs, central angles, and inscribed angles. So let us start with the arcs. So what is arc map? So based on the definition, an arc is a part of a circle included between any two of its points. If this is our circle, and we know that this is the center of our circle, and this one is consists of two points which is equidistant from the center. And it states here that an arc thou is a part of a circle. So if we have two points, we have here point one and point two, and we will connect the two points. If we go connect the two points, then we can create a what? We can create an arc. So that is an arc. Is an example. Is an example of an arc. And in terms of an arc, there are three categories. So arc is classified into three categories: the minor arc, the major arc, and the semicircle. So again, we have your three categories of an arc, minor arc, major arc, and a semicircle. It is easy for us to identify what's the minor arc, major arc, and semicircle from the name itself. So we can say that it is that it uh, it is a semicircle, or that arc is a semicircle if it divides the circle into two equal parts. For example, here. So if this is our arc. And this is also another arc. As you can see, we div we as you can see, we divide the circle into two. Diba? We have it one, one, and two. And arc E H G is equal to the measurement of arc. G J E because it the circle is divided into two equal parts or into two equal arcs. That is a semicircle. And for minor arc, a minor arc is from the word minor meaning um small, and from the word major arc, so major meaning bigger arc or larger arc. So if this is our circle. We can say that this is a minor arc and this is a major arc. And for us to easily remember that one, if if the circle is divided into into two equal parts, then it is a semicircle. But if that arc is less than semicircle, then we can say that it's a minor arc. And if that arc is greater than the semicircle, then we can say that that arc is a, ma is a major arc. Again, if a circle is divided into two equal arcs, then that is a semicircle. 
But if that arc is less than the semicircle, then it is a minor arc. But if that arc is greater than the semicircle, then we will call that one as a major arc. So that is the three categories of, or uh, three categories of arc. And let us proceed to the central angle. So what is central angle? The central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the is the center of the circle, and whose sides are a die of the circle. If this is our circle, and this is our center, it states that central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So this is the center of our circle, right? And that is also the vertex of that angle. So if this, if the center, uh, the center of our circle is the vertex of our center angle, and its sides are a die of the circle. So if this is the vertex of our angle, and the side is the radii, this one, the die or the radius of our circle. This is also the radius. Uh, with that, we can create a central angle. Again, a central angle is uh, a central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle, this one. And its sides are a die of the circle, this one this and this and it creates a central angle take note that the measure of a minor arc is less than 180 degree because a semicircle is 180 degree again if it's less than the semicircle then it is a minor arc if it's greater than the semicircle then it is a major arc so that is for central angle remember central angle is that its center is the vert its vertex is the center of the circle and its side is the radii of the circle. Let us proceed to the postulate one or arc addition postulate. It states that the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent non-overlapping arcs is the sum of the measure of those two arcs. And for us to easily understand this one, let's have this figure. If this is our figure, and this is our center, and we have um, the arc AB, the arc BC, the arc CD, and the center O. For postulate one or the arc addition postulate, the measurement of arc ABC, this one from here up to here, is equal to the measurement of the arc AB, this one, plus arc b c if we will add arc a b and arc b c it is equal to arc a b c for example if the measurement of our arc a b is let us say um five and the measurement of our arc b c is ten then what do you think is the measurement of arc ABC? Again, based on postulate one or the arc addition postulate, arc ABC is equivalent to arc AB plus arc BC. So if this, the measurement of arc ABC is equivalent to the measurement of arc AB, what's the measurement of our, of our arc AB? It is five. Plus, what is the measurement of, arc, of our arc BC? It is 10. So the measurement of arc arc ABC is 5 plus 10, it is 15. So that's it for arc addition postulate. Again, what if the measurement of our arc AC is, um, let us say the measurement of arc arc AC is um, 20. 20. And the measurement of our arc AB is, for example, it is this one for arc 
for our arc a b is let us say it's seven then what do you think is the measurement of arc bc okay very good the measurement of our arc bc it is 13 because if this is 13 and if we will add 7 and 13, it is 20. So that's it. That's it for our addition postulate. Now let us proceed to the theorem 7. Theorem 7, it states that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. Yeah, we already know what is central angles, right? Central angles is its vertex is the center of the circle and its side is the radius of the circle. For example, this one. Angle A, O, B. So angle A, O, B is a central angle, right? Because its, its vertex is the center of the circle and its radii is the and its side is the radius of the circle. So angle AOB, and we also have angle COD. For theorem seven, in the same circle, congruent circle, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if the center angles are congruent. So if angle AOB is equal to angle COD, Meaning, arc AB is equivalent to arc CD. Again, if the measurement of our angle AOB is, let us say it is um, 60 degree. Let us say it is 60 degree. An angle COD is also 60 degree. Sixty degree. As you can see, angle AOB and angle COD is equal. Meaning, if two angles is equal, if two angles are equal, their intercepted arcs are also equal. So meaning, ang what is the intercepted arc of angle AOB? The intercepted arc, arc of angle AOB is angle is arc AB, right? And the intercepted arc of angle COD is arc CD. So if angle AOB is equal to angle COD, arc AB is also equal to arc CD. So if the measurement of our arc AB is 10, the measurement of our arc CD is also 10, since their central angles are equal. The same with if their arc is equal, their, their, their central angles are also equal. For example, if the measurement of arc, of arc AB is, let us say, it is um, 9, the measurement if arc AB is equal to arc CD, which is also 9, and if angle AOB is, let us say it is 50 degree, angle COD is also 50 degree. Okay, that's it for theorem 7. Again, in theorem seven, if the central ang if the two central angles are equal, their intercepted arcs are also equal. Let us proceed to theorem number eight. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding cores are also what are also congruent. For theorem seven, it involves what it involves arcs and central angles but here in theorem 8 it involves what it involves the arcs and accords 
but both of them do have the same concept. The difference lang is that here is arc and center angles, but here is arc and chord. So for theorem number eight, it states that if chord AB is equal to chord CD, the arc AB is equal to arc CD. Again, the measurement of arc AB, this one, is equal to measurement of arc CD, meaning the chord AB is also equal to, um, to chord CD. Okay, for example, if the measurement of our arc AB is 10, and the measurement of our arc, C, arc CD is also 10. As you can see, the two arcs are equal. And if you can see if the measurement of, arc of our chord AB is 7, what do you think is the measurement of our CD? It's also 7. Again, if the two chords are equal, the intercepted arcs are also equal. Here, in theorem 7, if their central angles are equal, their, their intercepted arcs are also equal. Here in theorem 8, the, if their chords are equal, then their corresponding arcs are also equal. Okay, let us proceed to theorem number 9. In the same circle, or in congruent circle, two chords are equidistant from the center if and only if they are congruent. If this if this is our circle, and we have here the chord B A and chord D C. Again, this is our circle. This is our center, and we have the chord B A and a chord D C. And if chord B A is equidistant from the center, from here up to here. And the chord DC from here up to here, if the measurement of, of EO and OF is equal, meaning they are equidistant because the distance from the center are equal. If this is, if you can say the measurement of our R of our chord EO is i know if the measurement of our eo is 10 and the measurement also of our of is 10 as you can see the chord ba and chord dc is equidistant because the distance of the two chords are the same which is 10 meaning if two chords are are equidistant from the center, then that chords are congruent. So meaning if this is five, this is also five because the distance from the center towards the chords are equal. That is, that's it for theorem number nine. Okay, let's proceed to theorem number 10. In the same circle or in congruent circles, if two chords of a circle are unequal in length, then the longer the chord is, the nearer to the center. If this is our circle and this is our center, and we have the chord BA and a chord DC. As you can see, chord BA is nearer from our or nearer to the center. Again, chord BA, chord BA is nearer to the center. And chord DC is what? It is far from the center compared to the chord BA. And for theorem number 10, it states that the nearer the chord to the center, the longer it is. So meaning BA is nearer 
to the center compared to DC, which means chord BA is longer from chord DC. That's it for theorem number 10. Now, let us proceed to the inscribed angles. Kanina, we are discussing about central angles. But now we, are, we will discuss about inscribed angles. Remember what is, in, what is central angles? If this is our circle, the central angle is that its vertex is the center of the circle. This is the center of a circle. And its side is the radii of the circle. That is our central angle, but inscribed angle is different from central angle, okay? So what is inscribed angle? Inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is a point on the circle and whose sides are cores of the circle. So if this is our circle, for inscribed angle, its vertex is a point on the circle, this one. That is the vertex of the angle. and its side are the chord of the circle. This one, chord, chord. That is inscribed angle. Again, for central angle, the vertex is the center of the circle, right? But for inscribed angle, the vertex is a point on the circle. Again, for its side, for central angle, its side is the radii of the circle, this one. But for inscribed angle, its side is the chord, is the chord of the circle. That is the difference of that one. Okay, this is our inscribed angle. Inscribed angle, angle A. We can call this as this one as angle A or angle B, A, T. Take note also that inscribed angle can intercept a minor arc, semicircle, or a major arc. The same with the central angle. Okay, let's proceed to theorems involving the inscribed angles. The first theorem 11, inscribed angle theorem. The measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. For, for central angle, it states that the, the central angle is equal to its intercepted arc. But here in inscribed angle, the measurement of an inscribed angle is one half the measurement of its intercepted arc. Because this is our inscribed angle BAC. This is our inscribed angle. And the angle BAC, its intercepted arc is arc BC. That is its intercepted arc. For theorem 11, it states that the measure of an inscribed angle one half the measure of its arc. So we have your circle O with inscribed angle BAC. The measurement of angle BAC is equal to the one half of the measurement of its intercepted arc, which is arc BC. For example, the measure what if the, the measurement of our arc BC is, let us say it is 90. I know it is um, 100. What is the measurement of our angle BEC? It is 50 degree. Because based on theorem number 11, the measure of inscribed angle is one half to the measurement of its intercepted arc. The measurement of our angle BEC is one half to the measurement of our arc BC, which is 100. So what is one half one hundred? It is fifty degree. So that's it for theorem eleven and the square angle theorem. Again, the difference between central angle and square angle is that for central angle, the measurement of its central angle is equal to its intercepted arc. For example, 
if this is our circle and this is our central angle central angle let's just say the measurement of our arc here here up to here is um 15 then the measurement of this angle is also what it's also it's also 15 because this is based on central angle the measurement of central angle is equal to its intercepted arc well for inscribed angle the measurement of the inscribed angle is one half the measurement of its in, of its intercepted arc let us proceed to corollary number one for inscribed angle. Okay. Corollary number one. An angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Why we can say that if an angle is inscribed in a semicircle, then we can say that it's a right angle. Because what is the measurement of our of our semicircle, Gani? It is what? The measurement of our Semicircle is 180 degree, right? The measurement of our of our semicircle is 180 degree, and based on the end angle BAC is an inscribed angle. So what is one half of 180? It is 90, right? Because based on inscribed angle, diba? The measurement of the inscribed angle is one half its intercepted arc. What is the intercepted arc of angle BEC or angle CAB? Diba? Its intercepted arc of angle CAB is this one, which is the semicircle. And we know that the measurement of our semicircle is 180 degree. And for inscribed angle, is that one half its intercepted arc? So one half of 180 is 90 degree. And we know that 90 degree is a right angle. That's why corollary number one is true that an angle in square by semicircle is a right angle. For corollary number two, inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. Corollary number two is the same with the concept of central angle where the if the two central angles are equal, their, their intercepted arc are also equal. The same with corollary number two. The inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. So as you can see, in circle O, angle D, this one, angle D, this one intercept a minor arc BC and angle A, this one intercept a minor arc base BC. So angle D and angle A intercept the same arc in that case that two angles are congruent so if angle since angle a and angle d intercept uh, the same arc which is arc bc the two angles are also equal so if this is 100 so if this is if the measurement of our arc bc is 100 Then what is the measurement of our arc BDC? The buffer inscribed angle, one half of its intercepted arc. So what is one half of 100? It is 50. Great. Here, what is the measurement of angle A? It's also 50 because one half of 100. That's it for corollary number two. Let us proceed cor corollary number three. If a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, 
Then its opposite angles are supplementary. What is supplementary again? Can you remember what is supplementary? Diba? Supplementary meaning um, supplementary angle is that the sum of two angles is 180 degree. So if we have our figure in circle O, A, B, C, D is inscribed quadrilateral. See, A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral where it's inscribed in the circle O. And based on corollary number three, the opposite angles are supplementary, meaning angle A is supplementary to angle C, which is, if you will add angle A and angle C, it is 180 because Again, supplementary angle is that two angles, the sum of two angles is 180 degree. The same with here. Angle B is supplementary to angle D because the opposite angle of angle B is angle D. That's it for corollary number three. Let's have an example. So if the measurement of our angle A is 70, what do you think is the measurement of angle C? Okay, the measurement of our angle C is 110. Why is it 110 degree, ma'am? Because again, for corollary number three, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angle is, is um, the sum of two, of, of two angles or of two opposite angles are supplementary. So 70 plus 110 is 180. For corollary number four, if two arcs of a circle are included between parallel chords, then the arcs are congruent. Meaning, um, AB, CD, where is AB? Mm. If two arcs of a circle are included between parallel chords, then the arcs are congruent. Since BD and CE, BD and CE are, cong are parallel. And BC, this one, and DA is connected to the part of the two parallel line, meaning um, angle like arc BC is equal to arc DE. If this is 5, if BC is 5, DA is also 5. So that's it for corollary number 4. And that's all for chords, arcs, and central angles and inscribed angles. So that's it. So if you have questions, you can ask or chat or comment or answer on 